Hey traders, checking in on the cryptocurrency space. So the bears are keeping their control on the daily time frame. We're seeing alts weaker than Bitcoin and we're seeing broader market weakness today as well, adding downside pressure. Let's check everything out, see where we stand and what we're looking at for the rest of the week. All right, looking at the Bitcoin daily time frame. So we're getting the most likely, we got the most likely scenario. Remember we were looking back to May and we were talking about how we had the bounce, then we formed the daily higher low, then a lower high and tightened up. Took a little bit longer to play out in May, but we had the same thing. Again, it's just the equilibrium one time frame to the next. After you see massive volatility, you look for the zoom out game, you change trends. If you change the hourly trend, you look for a four hour lower high and an equilibrium. You change the four hour trend, you zoom out for the daily lower high. You scout the equilibrium. If you see a daily trend change, you zoom out and you scout a weekly lower high. Tons of space for a weekly lower high next bounce on Bitcoin, but we're still in a daily downtrend at this point. Lower high was set at 52,000. That's when I was scaling out of my swing position when I had my second chance as far as the bounce. And now we set a new daily lower high at 50.8. We just broke daily support of 46.7 thousand. Not by much, it's still pretty much, you can call that a double bottom. And if that level breaks with more follow through, we're just looking at psychological levels, 45, 44, 43 with 42.3 being the most important level. The daily lower highs are our guide as they have been this whole time. I mean, look how long we've been putting in daily lower highs on this bounce attempt, all these bounce attempts. So we know we have to get over daily EMA 12 for the bulls to prove any kind of change in the short term because these EMAs have been resistance for over a month at this point or just about a month and it's keeping the bears in control. Broader market today helping with the downside. So this is SPY. Red day, inside bar, IWM, which represents higher risk stocks. So again, any fear in the market, the, this is the first sector to go down and it would be more relatable to Bitcoin for that, in that regard, I would say, just a risk on asset. And we're seeing risk off as IWM is testing its recent low. But we headed into this morning saying, you know, Bitcoin has a bearish correlation with the broader market. And if we see any broader market consolidation, it's only going to add downward pressure to Bitcoin. So we're keeping an eye on the broader market, but watching for a higher low to try and form compared to 42.33. And you can look back at previous flush lows, right? We did see, I mean, this is still the same thing as May, where if we're looking right here, you know, lower high, lower low, we held the flush low. So that flush low is what is most important. So we can stay in a daily downtrend and hold that flush low and then try and get a weekly bounce going, knowing we will just look for a weekly lower high. But at this point with a lower high every single week for the last five weeks, that's something I'm keeping an eye on. And again, I'm not looking for any bullish positions at this point. I'm at a point where I am all cash aside from my long-term no touch. Next time we get a bounce, long-term no touch position will benefit. And maybe I'll see a spot that I like a re-entry but I'm, I'm being very cautious because anytime I add bullish position from here, that's me going aggressive again, as far as my cryptocurrency exposure. And I'm not gonna go aggressive as we're in a daily downtrend unless we're at extreme RSI levels like playing this bounce, but we're not in extremes on any time frames at this point. So I'm just in a patient waiting game. And if we were to see this bear break lack any follow through, I would be keeping an eye out for some kind of falling wedge to potentially be shaping up. I'm trying to find the time frame that I'd be looking at it right now. So something along these lines. Something like that. But again, I'm just patiently observing right now. And I have been trading the cryptocurrency space a bit. So for example, Bitcoin today, 15 minute RSI crushed, breaking the low of our daily higher low of 46.7. I was looking for that to mark a short-term bounce. Why would a support break mark a short-term bounce? Because if you're extremely extended in the short-term RSI levels and you hit a fresh low, okay, we broke that low. At that moment, after that support level breaks, who is left to short? Who is left to sell their longs? Nobody. That's why the scales tilt. So the 15 minute, that support break marked our low. Now we've got a 15 minute equilibrium. If it breaks bull, we zoom out and scout an hourly lower high. We're just playing the zoom out game again on a different time frame. But I use that information because MARA was a five minute falling wedge today. And I played this five minute falling wedge bullish. I did make one attempt too early and stopped out. But then I made a second attempt and made up for that loss and then some. 
So using Bitcoin to trade the crypto stocks, fee free, thing of beauty. So Bitcoin daily downtrend is our guide. And again, just keep it simple. If we are still setting daily lower highs, if daily EMA 12 is still resistance, the bears still have complete short-term control. FOMC is this Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern. Bitcoin will react. The dollar will react. Gold will react. And again, something I pointed out on Twitter, look at the weekly time frame for Bitcoin. Three big red weeks, inside bar, and currently testing the lows of the inside bar. Look at gold. Three big red weeks, inside bar, and testing near the high of the inside bar, but again, extremely similar. IWM, four red weeks, inside bar, testing the low of the inside bar. There are correlations everywhere. And to see so many names doing the same thing as Bitcoin, I mean, you can look at uranium stocks. What the hell does uranium have to do with Bitcoin? Well, here's CCJ, big three red weeks. Let's go to UUU, better example. Three, no, they're the same. Three red weeks, didn't get an inside bar, but again, it's very, very similar to what we're seeing right now in Bitcoin. The dollar is going to give us a sideways range breaking here soon. We're either gonna break bull on the FOMC to new highs, confirming a weekly bull flag, or we're going to break bear into further weekly consolidation. And that's going to have an impact on cryptocurrency, in my opinion. So I'm definitely watching the dollar and I'm watching how all these sectors that are trading very similar to Bitcoin over the last month, watching them for clues. Dominance charts going up here, which tells us that as we've been pulling back the past couple of days, that all coins are dropping faster. So essentially with four days of dominance bouncing, we could say Bitcoin bounced more significantly here and then is pulling back less significantly here, which shows us all coins in a clear, stronger daily downtrend for the most part. Ethereum, daily lower high and lower low. So again, topping out on the bounce. Still getting people telling, talking to me about my swing trade and telling me that I made a bad decision, which is fine. But we're in a clear daily downtrend. We knew the daily lower high was the most likely scenario. Higher low, lower high, lower low. Now it's all about 3575. Next time we bounce, anything under 4,186 is just a lower high. And the weekly time frame is potentially losing EMA 12. When's the last time we were under weekly EMA 12? It's been months. And again, from there, we zoom out. We'll scout monthly EMA 12 if the daily downtrend continues. We're watching daily oversold conditions on a lot of altcoins at this point. So Ethereum, when's the last time we saw daily oversold? Last monthly consolidation, I assume. We got pretty close last weekly consolidation, but it was the monthly. So if this daily downtrend continues, Ethereum will be headed towards daily oversold conditions. I'll be interested in daily oversold bounces on names that are coming off of all time highs. They're back burner trades. ETH BTC, we gotta be cautious. It has been easy the last month to say, I'm playing Ethereum bullish over Bitcoin because ETH BTC is stronger. The size of this pullback now, we are cautious of the head and shoulders. Next time we bounce, we are scouting a daily lower high. And if the bears confirm that daily downtrend, then bigger picture weekly consolidation will be underway. Still in a weekly uptrend, but got to be cautious because Ethereum is weakening a bit comparative to Bitcoin. It's just watching this uptrend resistance line on the weekly time frame, but it's only two touches. Something to keep an eye on, rising wedgie, but not gonna ha not gonna break anytime soon. So short term, we're scouting a bounce. Technically, anything above seven seven three is a daily high or low. Then we scout a lower high, and it's a head and shoulder setup to be keeping an eye out for. Binance USDT daily downtrend, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. We're looking back at the fresh low of four eighty nine, and we're watching daily oversold conditions if that comes into play. Let the daily be your bigger picture guide. Yes, we will see bounces along the way. Hourly oversold bounces underway, just scouting an hourly lower high. If we change that trend, we zoom out and scout the four hour lower high. Change that trend and we'll keep an eye on the daily lower high resistances. But for now, the weekly EMA 12 is at risk of being lost. But we got a lot of week left. Bulls want to keep holding that level. BNB BTC, very similar to Ethereum. Again, it's been very strong for weeks. This is a big enough pullback where we have to be cautious for a daily lower high to be the result of this next bounce. 
Soul USDT is now joining lead bears. It held on a lot stronger this whole time. And really over the last week, it started weakening significantly. Daily downtrend, daily bear flag confirmed. It's going to hit daily oversold conditions before a lot of other altcoins. And again, we're scouting a monthly higher low. So it is worth keeping an eye out. You know, the most aggressive bulls want to see daily, four hour, hourly, 15 minute all oversold to be scaling in. And then using the shorter term bounces, an hourly oversold bounce to maneuver around to try and put themselves in a risk-free position for a daily oversold bounce. But again, if we're going to see daily oversold bounce, we need to see Bitcoin hold 42.3 and start to try and shift momentum. So new daily lower high on Seoul is 176.85. Next support level is 153.06. But I'm more interested in daily oversold conditions than I am previous support levels. And Seoul BTC had a nice uptrend line here, but you can see it too is clearly breaking bear. And weekly, actually a monthly lower high on Seoul BTC. Trying to see if I mentioned something about this. Thought I did. Seoul USDT giving some initial red flags with a weak daily bounce. Bulls have to be cautious of Seoul BTC setting a monthly lower high. So that was five days ago. And over the last five days, Seoul BTC just dropping off a cliff. Monthly lower high set. Nope, not officially, but sure looks like it. And then we'll scout a higher low. Essentially looking for a two week equilibrium. Remember, we watched ETH BTC tighten up that two-week equilibrium for a long time. Well, Seoul BTC has its own version. Sand USDT, real tight here, testing support. Another name where, again, we're watching daily oversold conditions as backburner plays. We're scouting a weekly higher low here, inside bar, inside bar. And if they break bear, daily oversold will be approaching and we'll be scouting a weekly higher low. And mana is the same thing. So if we get... Inside bars breaking bear, we scout a weekly higher low, watching daily oversold conditions. And sand BTC, same thing. Inside bar, inside bar. And if they break bear on the weekly, we're not close to daily oversold here, but we would need to see a sand BTC bounce to be looking for a sand USDT daily oversold bounce to try and get going. So at this point, many alt bulls are patiently waiting for daily oversold conditions. If we're going to see those daily oversold conditions, we're likely going to need to see Bitcoin drop down to 45, 44. If I am looking to play these oversold bounces on Sol or BNB or Ethereum or whoever else gets to daily oversold, my ideal scenario is Bitcoin holding 42.3. So we need to see further weakness, another couple thousand dollars to the downside, maybe another 5% to the downside, have those altcoins drop to daily oversold, Bitcoin hold 42.3 and start to see some shift from daily lower highs to get a weekly bounce going for those daily oversold bounces to play out. Write that down. That's the ideal setup for a bull looking to play daily oversold conditions on a lot of these alts. Further downside still needed to get to those daily oversold, but holding the flush low and trying to get a weekly bounce going from there. Feel free to ask any questions. I hope you had a good weekend. Don't forget to do good things. Watch the broader market. So chapter six of the adventure, we had headed west. We hit Boulder and I was staying with that woman. Got the house sitting gig for a month. And I actually did trade a bit when I had that house sitting gig because I had stable internet and I had a routine and I could be more focused on it. So I was still trading penny stocks at that point. This was maybe five, six years ago. And I had a couple weeks until I started house sitting. So I explored Colorado. That's the kind of green you want to see. Tons of places to camp, tons of things to see. Utah and Colorado is a great chunk of land. And I haven't explored northern Utah. I wanted to. I had a road trip that was planned through northern Utah, through the northwest part of the country. I'm going to have to put that on my next to-do list later this summer. First, I'm going to be going back to Colorado in May. So I will bring my camera. All these pictures are with my phone but I'll bring my camera and I'm going to explore a bit more of Colorado and see some shows at the Red Rocks and have some fun, but that's for another time. So this time around, plenty of places to camp. My favorite part about Colorado is that there are rivers, so many places coming off of mountains. And so that made two things very easy. Number one, getting the fresh water and uh, filtering it to drink. 
And then number two, being able to have things. You don't want to be, you know, have a cooler and have food that needs to be kept cool when you're road tripping across the country. It's just constantly needing ice and then those plastic bags. And it's just when you have ice cold water coming off the mountain, I would just pull over and fill up my cooler with cold water and then put stuff that needed refrigeration in it. And then, you know, 12 hours later, 20 hours later, I can just dump that water out and refill it with other cold water. So the water in, in Colorado is not for swimming. You can jump in and enjoy it for a brief amount of time, but it is very cold coming off of those mountains, especially in May and June. And I believe it was June now heading towards July, but tons of great places to camp and lots of solitude. My favorite part about getting to a place that was a couple miles into the trail and had a nice clearing like this where, you know, it's just a lake and, and the forest is knowing that at about 4 or 5 p.m., no new people are going to be getting up to that spot. And that's because you can't hike up there and have enough time to get back before it's getting dark. So there's this, this lull time before it gets dark where everybody is stops coming up. And so you have it to yourself during that dusk time when the sun's going down. This is the baby elk that I snuck up on. And again, it's just just being still and very slowly moving. It's just a game of, you know, watching animals and trying to get close to them. There were no mothers or fathers around, which was good. <laughs> so there's plenty of spots like this all over. And I can't stress enough how if you go to freecampingsites.net and you look at BLM land, and BLM land is the same as national forest land to a certain degree it's government owned there's very little regulation on camping in terms of where you can camp and it's just this big public lands that we have you know to take advantage of this i believe is getting towards rocky mountain national park one of the spots near the entrance these are marmots so pretty much a giant squirrel if i had to describe them somewhat like a raccoon but they would live under the rocks and you could tell what rocks they lived under because the rim around it was all bright green and lush and the grass, you know, immediately after the rocks was a little bit dry and arid. And that's because of their waste. They just pop out of their hole and they go to the bathroom and that, you know, fertilizes all the plants that are around their rock. So you can tell where they live and they were curious and friendly. If you pee on a rock, they really enjoy the salt and the water and they'll run and lick it up. And... They, they, their lives, I mean, they just live in areas like this where they, that's all they know. That's their life. They sit on their rock and they overlook the expanse. There would be times where I would be alone in the spot and I would sit there and a marmot would jump up on his rock and he'd just be observing everything with me and just hanging out in the dusk. And they get curious if you don't move. So if I sat there for an hour he might, you know, get used to my presence and come and check me out and see what's going on once he realizes that I'm not a threat. So that's the start of Colorado. We'll continue going westward over the Rocky Mountain National Park. Looking forward to going back there again in May and open to any suggestions of places. I'm probably going to hit up Telluride, Steamboat Springs, and Rocky Mountain National Park, Boulder. I'm going to see Papadocio in Red Rocks. I got a buddy in that band and Random Rab and... Polish ambassador opening up. So that should be a fun show. That'll be in a few months and I'll be sure to bring you all along. So have a great rest of your day and we'll see you over the weekend.